Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have an unbalanced YY circuit. And in order to calculate the currents, to find the currents IA, IB, and IC, we're going to have to use the Kirchhoff's rules. In other words, we're going to have to sum up the voltages around the loops to solve for the currents. Now, since this is a very big involved problem, we're only going to show you how to get the one current I sub A. And in order to do that, we're going to follow the, the, the following process. So first of all, recognize that we have a balanced source, 120 volts spread out at uh, phase angles 120 degrees apart, but we do have an unbalanced Y load. Uh, we have a J5 on the A impedance, we have a minus J10, and we have a resistance on impedance B. So now, how do we calculate those currents? First, what we're going to do is we're going to recognize that we have one loop right here and we have a second loop right over here. So we're going to add up all the voltages around each of the loops. So starting with loop one, start at the neutral point right here. We have a plus 120 volt rise. Then here we have a drop across this impedance. So it's minus the current I1 times the impedance J5. Then over here we have a drop minus the current I1, we follow this current right here, with an impedance of 10. And then we have a voltage rise because notice we have I2 going in a clockwise direction, so we have voltage rise I2 times 10. And then we come around here, we have a voltage drop from here to here, which is minus 120 with a phase angle of minus 120 degrees. So that's our first loop. All those voltages should add up to zero. Cleaning things up a little bit, we have uh, I1, let's see, I1 here times a minus 10 and a minus J5, and we have a I2 times 10, and then we move all the voltages over to the other side, so this becomes, on the right side, we have a plus 120 at a minus 120 phase angle, and a minus 120 at a zero degree phase angle. Essentially, we moved these two over to the other side, so the, size, the signs change, and we collected all the I1 and I2 components and separated the I1s and I2s. Then I multiply everything by negative 1 because I like this to be positive. This becomes a negative 10. This becomes, this becomes a positive and this becomes a negative right there just to clean things up a little bit. And then we calculate what the right side is equal to. Notice we can factor out a 120 and the minus 120 degree becomes a minus 1 half and a minus j squared of 3 over 2. And when we, it's all said and done, we have 180 for the real part and the square root of 3 times 60 for the imaginary part on the right side. And on the left side, we have I1 times 10 plus J5 and I2 times a minus 10. So essentially what we've done now here, we have an equation. We have I1, I2, and a constant on the right side of the equation. Next, we want to do loop 2. So we're going to go around loop 2. Let's see, let's start at, hmm, I guess I started, um, yep, I started right here. So I have a minus 120 with a phase angle of minus 120 and a plus 120 with a phase angle of, ooh. Oh, okay, start over again. Okay, next we're going to go around the loop like this, starting at point C. So we have a minus 120 volt drop with a phase angle of 120, and a plus 120 volt rise with a phase angle of minus 120. Then we come over here, we have I2, we have a voltage drop across this and across this because of I2. So minus I2 times 10 minus J10, and then we have a voltage rise because I1 goes this way, so we'll go against the current, I1 times a positive 10 for the voltage rise. Add up all the voltages, we get zero. So now we're going to collect the terms together. Notice we have a 10 times I1 over here. Apply the negative sign in here, so we have an I2 times a negative 10 plus J10. And then moving these two components to the other side, that gives me a plus 120 at a 120 degree phase angle and a minus 120 at a minus 120 degree phase angle. We then collect these terms together. We do the same thing that we did over here. And this ends up being 120 times a square root of 3 times a phase angle of 90 degrees. And over here on the left side, we still have 10I1 plus minus 10 plus J10 times I2. So now we have two equations and two unknowns. 
We have I1, I2 in here, and we have I1 and I2 in here. So if we take this equation and solve it for I2, moving this to the other side, so we move this over to the right side, so it becomes minus 10 minus J5. We still have this on the right side, and then we divide both sides by the coefficient of what's in front of I2, which is a minus 10. And when I simplify that, I end up with I2 being equal to 20.78 with a phase angle of minus 150. That's this divided by minus 10. And we have this divided by minus 10, which gives us a, um, well, we have a minus times a minus, so that cancels out. So we have 10 divided by 10 is 1, and J5 divided by 10, which is 0 0.5 times J, multiplied times I1. So now we have I2 in terms of I1. And this then gets substituted in here in our second equation, we replace I2 by what I2 is equal to. We plug that in here. So what we have here is we have 10 times I1 plus this component times I2, and so it's minus 10 plus J10 multiplied times I2, which came from over here. So notice that this here is exactly the same as what we have over there circled. That then equals the right side, so this can be written as 207.85 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Notice this equation here only contains the variable i, so now we can solve that equation for i, move all the terms with i to one side, and then eventually move everything else over to the other side. So notice we have i1 simplified, we have a 10 minus 10 minus 5, that gives us a minus 5, we have a plus j5, all multiplied times r1. Notice when I multiply this out, I end up with this, and then on the right side, I can convert that to just the j207.85. Then I move that to the other side, on the right side, I end up with a minus 283.9, this becomes positive, added to this gives me this for the numerator, and then the coefficient of i1 here goes in the denominator, then I realize that to get rid of the j in the denominator, I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the con complex conjugate of the denominator. Before I do that, I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by negative 1. So I have a plus 5 minus j5 in the denominator. So the complex conjugate becomes 5 plus j5. When I multiply that together, I get i1 is equal to 2839 divided by 50, or 56.8 amps. That's the current for i1. Now, I need to find the current for I2. But since I have an expression where I2 is equal to this times I1 here in the back, what I can do then is here in the box, and let me move over a little bit so you can see what I've got here. So notice we have I2 is equal to this component right here, 20.78 with a phase angle of minus 150, plus I plus J 0 0.5 times I1, but I1 was 56.8. So in that case, we multiply this through, I2 becomes equal to this, or I2 becomes equal to 42.77 with a phase angle of 24.88. So this is the real and, and imaginary portion or magnitude and phase angle format for I1 and I2. Now, if you want to calculate IA, IB, and IC, notice IA is equal to I1. So let's go ahead and write that in here. You can see then that IA is equal to I1. IB is equal to, here we have I2 minus I1 because I1 is in this direction, I2 is in that direction, so IB is equal to I2 minus I1, and finally IC is equal to the negative of I2 because they're in opposite directions, so the negative of I2. That means that once you've found a value for I1 right here, and the value for I2 right there, to get the value for the three line currents, IA, IB, IC, IA is equal to I1, IB is equal to I2 minus I1, IC is equal to minus I2. Let me write that just a little bit better. Minus I2 like that. And that's how you find the three line currents using this particular method. It's basically solving one variable in terms of the other and substituting. On the next example, we'll do the same problem, but we'll use determinants to calculate the values for I1 and I2, so you can see that there's two different ways in which that can be done, 
and then you can pick the one you prefer. And that's how we do that.